For the minute you land at the Port-au-Prince airport and walk out, you realize you're in a country that has really taken it on the chin over and over and over again. It mattered me coming here and doing whatever I could do to make it better. This was the first major public project to start in the first year after the earthquake. I really had my doubts about how it would work. And we thought it was going to be near impossible to get volunteers down. It's Haiti. No one wants to go to Haiti. And it was an enormous feat, I think, of human will and perseverance to overcome all of those obstacles, to overcome all of those barriers, and to say, this is going to get done. And you climb the, you know, these hills up to get up to Mirabale. And you're going through uh, the town square, and you know the, the the roads are washed out. It's all of the classic signs of a third world country. And you turn a corner, and there's this amazing hospital that is being built uh, in these flatlands up in uh, Mirabale. You know, it's one of these, uh, I would consider, transformative events, the construction of this hospital. The potential of what it does and what it can do could, you know, see a rebirth of what Haiti uh, could, could or can be. The concept of the, of the hospital, and it was conceived really in the immediate aftermath of the earthquake, by the Minister of Health at the time, uh, Partners in Health, Dr. Paul Farmer, uh, Dr. David Walton, and others, was that this was a way to give the public health care system a huge sort of immediate injection. This hospital aims to do two things. Raise the quality of care that is available not only in the region but also in the country, and two, be a fertile teaching and training ground for the next generation of Haitian clinicians. And this is the first of its kind, meaning there are other hospitals in Haiti, but none that are designed in this fashion, none that will be a public-private partnership, none that will have the type of technology that we'll have in this hospital that will be squarely in the public sector. It will be accessible to everyone. In, in the setting of the poorest country in the hemisphere, that to me trumps all. Because people, poor people especially, have to have access to care. If people are constantly uh, undernourished, malnourished, sick from, from having bad water, uh, you know, lack of sanitation, uh, and lack of access to health care, it's just going to repeat the cycle. You can really never you know, you can't work steadily, you can't have the kind of economic development that a country needs to begin to come out of its third world status. And I think this hospital, because it's going to be delivering care on such a high level, will have the potential to have a dramatic impact on the entire economic development of the country. Jim understood that if they were going to build a hospital that was going to be earthquake resistant, hurricane resistant, and would have the level of facilities comparable to a major American uh, hospital that there was a skill set that was involved that was beyond what most Haitian workers uh, had. I mean, first we had perfect timing. This was, the, again, the only major public project to start in the first year after the earthquake. As a result of that, we had tremendous support from the construction industry, from manufacturers, especially the electrical industry, and from unions and individual companies by sending people, by sending materials, and helping us with the engineering and design of the project. We had more volunteers than we could actually absorb, which was the, I would never have guessed in a million years that it would have been that way. I was concerned about how carpenters, many of whom had never traveled outside the United States before, would react to this and how they would handle it. And I'm happy to say that I really underestimated people. I didn't even hesitate. It wasn't even a thought that went through my mind. I knew I wanted to come here right away. 
just the thought of when we heard we were coming to Haiti, we were all like, ooh, I don't know, you know, do we want to go there, the devastation? You do and you don't, you're a little nervous, you're scared. Well, what's this going to be about? And um, it just, it turned out everything was good. First, out in our training facility in Millbury, uh, Jim had contacted me about, uh, they had been donated 300 doors that needed to be retrofitted, the hinges and, and all the hardware needed to be reset, resanded. The apprentices out in Millbury did that. And then we shipped them down to the hospital in Haiti, and then a number of our members actually installed those doors. I was involved in uh, setting door frames. They were like knockdown frames. They came in like three pieces, the two sides and the top. We set them into the uh, concrete block with uh, expansion bolts. And then uh, after all the frames were up, we would go back and hang the doors and install the hardware. A number of contractors sent a bunch of people down. Uh, Mark Ritchie Woodworking made a lot of the architectural millwork that got installed down there. Uh, we had folks uh, do specialized ceiling work. Uh, really all of the various crafts or skills that make up the carpentry toolbox all of them were done uh, at the facility by our members. One of the issues in creating a good environment for infection control is the flooring. We needed to put in welded seamless floor. The problem was nobody in Haiti or the Dominican Republic knew how to do that. And the material was prohibitively expensive. Troy Bickford and his brother Joe from Contract Flooring, they got us donated tile, they approached uh, their suppliers and got thousands of yards of material at a tenth of the cost that they would normally pay, which really allowed us to put welded seamless flooring throughout the sterile areas and the OR theaters. This is the second time I've been to Haiti. I never thought that I'd be <laughs> putting floor covering in a hospital in Malibelle in Haiti and never thought I'd be doing that. So it's an awesome thing to be using my skills to be doing something like this. I contribute with uh, my knowledge of what I do. It's, it's a wonderful uh, uh, atmosphere with everybody. Do you want to go with me? Yeah. OK. <laughs> well, you. My Haitian colleagues, they are very knowledgeable, and uh, they pick up the, the trade fast. Okay, all right. The most important connection is that the skills were passed on. The folks who went down there uh, from all the trades, not just the carpenters, were committed to passing the skills that they have, that they've developed over a lifetime uh, in the United States, in New England, passing it on to the, uh, the folks down there and watching Haitian workers who knew nothing about some of the stuff that they, that they were doing, 12 months later being able to hang doors, being able to, hang, you know, to, to lay out ceilings and hang ceilings, to do all of the things that we take for granted, and they don't because they've never really just been exposed to those skill sets. It was very inspiring. It's a perfect collaboration between étrangers and Haitians. Par rapport avec les gens qui sont nous ensemble pour parler, nous gagnons ensemble. Toujours une app conseil, mon cher, mais comment tu avais fait tel travail, sous fait le conseil à mieux et puis nous conseiller le conseil. Bon, et on ne dit pas nous, puisque nous sommes dans le domaine de nous, dans le sens que nous travaillons. Et avec ça, blanc poté pour nous, ouais, c'est quelque chose de différent. Puisque nous ne sommes pas de nous sommes en montrer de montrer domaine qu'on fait le plus rapide. Et on vient nous dans le sens qu'il fait là, le plus bon, et pour qu'il y ait de ça tout. Et c'est pour les plus. Oui, oui. Et vous foutez nous sauter ensemble. Oui, bam, bam, bien. One of the funny things is that my son, is also who works for me, um, came down with me, and my son in law. And the first, after about the third day we were here, my son turns to me and says, Dad, I, um, this. This is great. I understand how nice we have it at home. And uh, it just made me feel very good um, to hear that, that he realizes what we have at home compared to what these people do not have. And um, I believe in paying it forward. If I had the chance to do it again, I would. I, I would do it again in a happy. And I know all my guys would too. Well, I, you know, I'm just enormously proud of all of our members who went down there. I think it was a life-changing experience for a lot of them. And I think it has the potential, what they did, to change the lives of a lot of people in Haiti. How, how often in your life do you get a chance to do something like that? That's a great thing.
I would say this is the culmination of 25 years of experience. You know, it is a legacy that not necessarily that I leave, but that we as an organization leave. And everyone who worked on this project, from the carpenters to the electricians to the doctors who helped design it, to Jim who helped build it, you know, we can point to that and say, we did that. And you know what? It's changed not hundreds of lives, not thousands of lives, but tens of thousands of lives. It's a dream. It's a dream come true realized by the opportunities afforded to us and the ability to bring all these different people together. I think it's a great story that this hospital wasn't built by me, wasn't built by Jim. It was built by hundreds, literally hundreds of people from all over the world who did this. So it's not just me who's going to be proud of this, but I guarantee those carpenters who came down are going to think about this you know, when they have their grandkids and say, I was part of something special. I think it ranks pretty high uh, in my, on my list, certainly, and hopefully on theirs. <laughs>